Good morning. I'm Janine. And I'm Chris. Welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. Yep. <clears throat> the last Sunday of February. Can you believe it already? I don't know how that's possible. It's a short month, but it's been a weird month. We had a great Wild and Wooly show. Oh, Perfect. Could not have asked so for better. So much fun. It was. It and was. busy. I didn't even get to walk around the show. I didn't either. I got to see Laura from Laughing Cat Fibers because I always buy yarn from her. Right. And I got to buy a bag from Esmeralda Bag. Yeah. And actually, we traded. You traded. So we did a she lot of traded. trading. I, but, yeah, and I normally walk around before the show starts, but people were waiting in line 20 minutes before we even opened, and they opened the doors early, and I'm like, but, 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 and she's like, do you want me to turn them away? I'm like, no, but I didn't get to walk around. Like, I didn't get to do anything. I think, like, I don't know, it may be like, if this is what it's going to be like, then next year I'm going to send the person that's with me with my phone to go, yeah. to go walk around, or at least their phone, somebody's phone. Didn't even get a chance to do pictures. a live on Facebook or anything. No, nothing. It was so busy. Yeah, and thank you was. for everybody yes. that came out. It was, I mean, it, last year was fabulous, but this year was like super it was fabulous. Just, wow. That's all you can say is wow. I know. I'm very, I'm so thankful. And it was so much fun. And I met a lot of new people. You did. I like, oh my goodness. And stuff was flying off the wall. People were standing in line with three and four skeins of yarn. And she didn't have a chance to turn around. We finally went, hey, Chris, how you doing over there? And she looked, she went, ooh. I guess I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm doing okay. There was a point where I was like, like, poor Sue. She was like, I don't know what the best way to help you is. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm like, talk to people. I got this. Yeah. And I don't, and it's just like, I don't know if it's because like, I know my machine better. And you can do it faster. So I can do that part faster. And there was a line. So she was kind of talking to people and I just kept looking up going, I'll be with you in just one minute. I'm sorry. I'm bagging as quick as I can. I'll be with you in just one minute. I'm sorry. It was like I was on repeat. Yeah, it was funny. At one point, I had to I had to tell Bob, I go, um, can you go talk to those people over there? Because I had line. People goes, we saw you were busy. You had a line. So we went on our way. We'll see you at the store. I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, and I, I had quite a few people of our local people that go, I'm not buying anything from you today because I know I can get it at the shop. I went, okay, bye. And she still, she goes, I'm not going to have any yarns to bring back into the store. And I did, but almost no sparkles, like my sparkle sock got, yeah, it got hit. But that's good. Oh, I love it. I People love like that it. they've been waiting. They've been waiting because it was gone for a while. It was gone for a now long while. It was really hard to get for a while. Like if you want sport weight, I can get that. But, and there's a big difference between the sparkle sport and the sparkle sock. There One is. has a lot more Stellina. So people that like that little less Delina in it were like just patiently waiting, and then they <laughs> freaking vamped my section. It's good. Gone. That's good. I know. It was a good thing. What's on our schedule for the rest of February? Oh, February's over. Oh, ha! There's nothing left in February. There's a couple days. Um, but what we do have is for the first couple of weeks of March. Ah, we're busy. Okay. Oh, we are. On March first, so that's a Wednesday. We have basic needle felting. Now, I don't require any basic needle felting for any of your upcoming workshops, but I'm going to skip ahead and go on the 11th. We're going to do this cute little gnome, and you don't have to know how to needle felt to do this, but if you take the basic needle felting workshop, you're going to be one step ahead of everybody It'll else. It'll help you. Let's It'll help. put it that way. It'll help you. He's cute. Isn't he adorable? He's ridiculous. Ridiculous. He's so he's, I have a dumb question. This yeah. is gonna be a good one, guys. Do I need to get orange locks dyed for that day? Um you might because I don't think there's enough on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about it until just now. I'm, I'm gonna like, need some orange locks uh, and yeah. Maybe I should do that. Uh, maybe I'll get right on that this weekend. Okay. Um on the fourth, which is a Saturday yes. from one to four. Spinning with intention, and the intention being taking that yarn that you create and weave it into a project. So yes. this is a twofold, but don't worry, the weavers out there, if you don't know how to spin, there'll be our yarn here for you to get. Yeah, she'll, she's going to spin yeah, the yarn for I'm you. I'm going to spin the yarn. 
So in this project for the spinning with intention, we are, you'll see a couple sections that have little bobbly bits that are hanging out. And this is the part of the spinning with intention that we'll be working on. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, spinning with intention, it, it would be exceptionally helpful and probably a prerequisite that you have had core spinning. It is a prerequisite. Yeah, because you're going to need it to be able to do that class. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's, I mean, we're part of the reason of the intention series in general is because a lot of times like we as spinners, we just sit down with fiber and we spin. And yeah. then we come up with like all this spun fiber and we're like, We've had this conversation before. What do I do with this? I have bags in the back room yeah. that I'm slowly, my brain is starting to go, you could put that in this project. Yes. And, so yeah. we're doing, like with, with this year in general, we are we are focusing this year on spinning with intention. Yeah. At least from my side of things. And the first of the, the series is this lovely thing on the rigid heddle, little scarf. Um, we're going to be doing another one that where we're spinning what we need for a really chunky funky hat okay we're gonna do another one where we're spinning our yarns for a tapestry project yep and there are a couple others up my sleeve I just haven't got there yet one of them I would like to be the trilume um, yeah but I'm gonna have to get more of you people in here to learn how to try loom. how to do trilum. so the thing Step is it up. what's really cool about this is she does the spinning part of it the weaving is me she created a yep. workshop for me but I'm also going to be teaching you a different warping technique that we've never done before, which is really fun. Yes. Um, and it, we'll figure it out. But it's it's not difficult. You almost it need just two takes, people. You do to need do two it. people to do this. Um, and our friend Tony Jody doesn't use two people to do this. So one of these days, I'm going to have to watch her or ask her warp her. Yeah, I'm going to see her later. So yeah, ask her. I don't know. She's like, no, I just reach over and go like this, and I reach over and grab this, and I do this, and I'm like this, and I'm like, huh, yeah. Well, yeah. it took Janine and I, both of us, and there were moments where we were like, hey, give me back some of my, my wart. Or the table wanted to tip over. Yeah, because so we have didn't to lock down that table. You've got to make sure you're clamped securely. really good. Yep. Um, what's after that? No skill macrame. On March 8th from 5 to 8. Like mines. <laughs> Isn't he cute? He's three dimensional. It's March. It's leprechaun season. And he's completely my own little design. Yep. Um, a lot of the things that I was looking up and seeing for ideas, they were very flat, very two dimensional. And I was like, there has to be a way to make them like 3D. So we did. We have a little 3D St. Patty's Day gnome. I don't have the gold buckle. I'm sorry. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> but he's kind of cute, huh? So yeah, that's our no skill macrame. Yeah. Um, just so you know, I got a lot of fun no skill macrames coming up for April yeah. and May and June. I can't wait. This is gonna be fun. She's good. Lots of fun. She's keeping me going with um, the needle felting stuff. I have to keep up with her. So <laughs> we feed off each other, we so do. it works. On March tenth, advanced tapestry from twelve to five. Now. For those of you that like to know what that is, keep a lookout on the Alchemy and the Long Tail Knits and the Blue Fiber Tree Facebook pages and our Instagram if I can remember to get my act together. In a couple of days, I'll get a picture of it up. Um, we're doing, um, we're using two specific techniques that we learned in basic tapestry mm -hmm. um, to create kind of, it's it's a landscape but it's not the landscape of like that fine detailed fine yarns mm -hmm. um we have a tree and we've got some grass and we have some flowers um it's really neat and one of the techniques um that we're using i'm actually taking it a couple of steps further and showing them how to take this one technique and turn it into three different techniques so, because it creates a lot of texture and dimension mm -hmm. within the tapestry. And then I'm also showing you guys how to mark off shapes yep. within your tapestry. The, this beginning one, it is 
face it. Like, we didn't get carried away. I tried to be nice. You will not finish this the day of the class. You will finish your outline. You will have the understanding of what you need to do to finish it. And you'll probably start weaving. Oh, no, you'll it. you'll definitely you'll start weaving within it's five 45 hours, minutes. So, yeah. yeah. You um, just might have this much left at the top, but it's very easy to finish. Right. And also the whole point of that, too, is it gives you the flexibility to pick your colors for what you want to use for that. Right. So and once we get the picture up, then you can go through your stash and you can see what you have. You will have to have your own warping frame, and the larger frame is what you're going to need for this piece, yeah. which is what I saw here in the store. Yeah, we're using the larger warping frame. You'll need your uh, warp thread, thread. Um, and you, you, we are asking that people come to the class with their loom warped and with your base half hitch lines in at the bottom. Um, it will speed up the process because I really don't want to lose a half hour of time there's a lot to teach um, we will be using the warping thread to mark off our sections yep um, there'll be a picture up on long tail knits and an alchemy uh, that shows you these are the nine yarns I used for the project you go find your three browns your three greens and your three colors that you want to represent your flowers in your work um, you know thicker and the worsted to super bulky mm -hmm. is a good idea. The thinner the yarn, the longer you're going to be working on that piece, just so you know. Um, bring, but, bring weave, the regular tools. Yeah, bring your weaving needle, toodle, tools. Toodles. Bring your toodles. Weaving tools, your tapestry, uh, darning needle, yeah. your weaving needles if you have them. Yep. You know, whatever you use to help you, the quilling comb. Yep, things Quilling like comb that. you'll use. I don't know that you'll really use your weaving needles in this one a lot. Okay. You just, I unless you decide to add your own twist on it, which this is freaking your work. You can do what you wish. I'm right. going to show you how I got what I got. Um, with the colors of yarn that are specific in there, you know, pull from your stash. And then what you don't have, you can get here. Janine has here. And remember, she has, like, we have the discounted rack. We right. have the charity, charity rack, rack and then the whole entire store to choose from. Yep. So lots and lots of options. Um, I will be making sure that I get some greens and browns okay. in my drift. Yeah. Guide for that mm -hmm. specifically. That's the chunkier yarn. Yeah. And um, I actually have, I have a single that's kind of like a lopey mm -hmm. that we might have used it when we did the try to dye class. It might have been yes. one of the yarns. Yes. I have some of that at home. And I may dye some of that. And just as a special, hey, we'll hang it and say you can buy this for that day if you need it. Right, right. Um, we'll have smaller yardage for that kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. Well, you'll be surprised how much yards you use for this. Well, well, it's a bigger piece, too. So just Remember depends. that the big, big dark brown? Yeah. He's almost gone. <laughs> and I'm only a third up. There you go. Because of one of the techniques. That's okay. So you will go, you will blow through some yarn, but grab your stash. It's a lot right. of fun. Um, then on the 11th, from 11 to 2, is a spinner's technique for plying. I'm so excited for this. Yes. I've I am. I've already had a couple people sign up. So. Yeah. yeah. Nancy Forrester goes, oh, well, I don't need to take that because, I mean, I've already done this and that and this and that. And I went, Okay. I said, that's fine. You don't have to. I said, but I am I am teaching spiral plying that day. And she went, oh. And, it, and some other stuff, well, too. Right. So, but yeah. she was just kind of like, oh. Because <laughs> she already knows how to do one of the techniques, the chain plying that I'm teaching that day. But, you know, we're going to do, we're going to learn the, they're going to see. They're not actually going to do the hauser plow, plying because it takes a lot of yarn. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show them how to do it. And then you'll be able to do it at home. Because once you see it. Right. It's pretty easy. And understand, you have a lot of singles that you need to have spun before nice. you do this. So the event tab under the website or the Facebook page for Long Tail Knits and Alchemy. Did you accept it yet? She hasn't. It'll be there. I'm and almost positive I did. I did it yesterday, so you probably did. So the thing is, what's happening is, um, there's a list of the singles that you would need, the quantity the size and the thickness yes that you will need 
if you already have singles in your stash already spun bring up. Bring your singles. Yeah, you're ahead. I don't care. And she has a, a, a line down there. The more you bring, the more you'll be able to do. Yeah. So it's... And it's yeah, and I, a, and I was real specific about trying to do one-ounce singles. There's only one technique that I would like you to have the two-ounce singles because you're going to blow through... Right. You're going to blow through the yarn when we start chain plying. I mean, you really... Right, right. A one-ounce ball for chain plying, you'd be like, oh, that was fun. That was 30 seconds. But, um, you know, and if you have singles that are more than one and two ounces, I don't care. Bring what yeah. you have. Um, it's just easier, you know, some of the plying classes that I've been to in the past... We come here, we spin the yarn, and then we ply, and we don't get to learn as many plying techniques. And I don't necessarily mean here, but... You don't have as much time to learn the technique that you went right. specifically for. Right. And it cuts down on material fees because yeah. you all have fiber, and if you don't have fiber, there's a whole wall. And some of you purchased fiber at the Wild and Woolly event, I've been told, so you have fiber. Girl. <laughs> Sam has more fiber than I do. She's like, I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get this. And she goes, do you think that will look good with this? Okay, I'm going to get that that goes with this. And then she came here the next Monday and went, well, I need the other two of those because I think they match the ones that I already got. <laughs> Sam is like 90 pounds of fiber now. She's, She's cracking hilarious. me up. She's hilarious. Probably has more than what she weighs. I know. I love it. I love it, though. <laughs> um, but I think that's it, like, for classes, like, as far as... Well, the full schedule for March we'll put up on the list, It's right? already... It's already... Yeah, you'll add it to the video, yeah. but it's up on the... Um, homepage of Longtail Knits. It's been there for over a month. But you have April on your calendar? I do. Also on March is this guy. Don't forget, we showed, we showed him earlier. On the 11th from 12 to 4. So she has an 11 to 2, and I have a 12 to 4. Now, four hours. On what day? What? On the 11th. You oh! Home. Two things going on on the 11th. Yeah. Sorry. So, Bring it. I'm trouble. She's great at making me lose track of what I was saying. Yes, I have given us four hours. Stop it. <laughs> we are not going to need the entire four hours, but guess what? You're making the base of this, not me. So you're going to need at least 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, to make just the to make the cone. Yeah. I'm not making it. You are. Well, so it's how you learn. It's how you learn. And if you learn to make that cone, like, then... The sky's well, it, the limit with the things you can exactly. do in the future. And you're going to learn to make that cone in basic needle felting so if you take that workshop on the first. So Wait till you see how the nose gets made. You're going to be like, <laughs> no way. He's fun. It was hilarious. So easy. Um, yeah, and then just to touch real quickly, the rigid heddle um, weaving technique with the yarn that we've spun intentionally is on, on the 18th. From 10 to 2, so yep. that you actually know the date of when we're going to do and that. And you need your own rigid huddle. You of need course. your own loom. Yeah, it's an advanced yep. technique. And on the thing, just like um, the tapestry class, there's a list of stuff that you will need, mm -hmm. that you can bring if you have it, and things that you need to get yep. when you're here. Yep, so um, most of the events for March will be up by today. Um, the 25th or 26th, 26th of February. I don't know. Yeah, because I have a thing on the 25th. And give me a couple of days and that tapestry will be up. Yes. I, I, listen, I was on such a roll getting samples out, and sadly I worked into April instead of finishing what I needed from March. Well, you know, the thing is by the time, because we tape early yeah. these sessions, by the time this releases, she'll have it done. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be up there. Um Yes, I do have April on the hard copy. It's not I up on the website on yet. To make sure my April matches her April. Because a lot of times it doesn't. <laughs> no, somehow we're a day off somewhere. <laughs> she put one class, but I have it over here. So we always have to do she a double does, check. But I moved that. Don't you remember? Obviously not. Obviously, Obviously not. Obviously not. So last time when we talked to you guys, we said that we're doing a how-to video on drum carding. Yes. So um, one of the things that when we were showing the drum carter mm -hmm. and talking about it, she said there's ratios. I went, oh, wow, what do we need them for? What are they? So Ashford's, book, it up for us. Ashford's book of carding, which is Hand Spinner's Guide to Fiber Preparation. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. But in the back is maintenance. We learned something new a minute ago, just so yes, you know. Yes, we did. 
So it shows you how to adjust the flick liquor, the liquor and the drum itself, how to adjust that spacing. It, it moves sometimes, so you have to go in and adjust it. It is to have a specific gap. I've had mine for three years. I've never adjusted it. It should be set when you get it, but okay. mine's been adjusted so many times I have to go in and do it again. Oh. You're also supposed to oil it. Something we didn't know, so guess what we'll be doing today? I'll be oiling the drum We'll curve. be oiling the drum curve. I can't believe that we're supposed to oil a drum curve. There are gears that need yeah, to be oiled. But like, yeah, I, I really wish I still had my like directions that came in the drum carter so I could open it up and go, oh, look what I didn't read. Oil this thing. Um, I have mine for the one that's here in the store. I'll have to pull it out of the yeah. back room and see if I have it. Now, the ratio thing. There are two ratio settings. There's a four to one and a six to one. Okay, and what do those ratios do? Well, all that says is it's just like spinning. So it's how fast. How many revolutions over here is yeah. how you set it here when okay. you crank. So one turn of a how crank. How slow or how fast right. that wheel spins per crank. So when you crank this, the drum actually moves so fast. And if you move these here, the mm -hmm. belt, the belt will actually change how many revolutions per turn. So you can do more turns per revolution Hmm. If you, yeah, I'm gonna leave mine right where it's at. Well, that's fine. Because this is the it thing. It works. So you know what it is. I don't traditionally use a carter, a drum carter, the way that we're technically supposed to. I don't feed in the machine. You know, from. Well, I know you don't do the front end. I don't. And but, and but maybe if I did, the revolutions would make a difference. No. Oh, okay. Because all that tell all that does, mm -hmm. when one complete revolution of the crank, okay, mm -hmm. is <laughs> gonna make me look it up now. Sorry, like I have a problem with ratios. They don't, and it's not a math thing. It's it is a math thing, but it just it just determines how many times something is spinning as compared to the other one. Right now, I do know. The liquor has a slower rotation than the drum, and that may be the four to one, six to one. I gotcha. Okay. Don't know for sure. Okay. Because one is definitely smaller than the other. Yeah. No, so I just always... I guess I have to read I just it. always feed through the top just because I have more control over where my fibers go. Well, and you're I'm doing real... specific techniques, I'm too. I'm picky. Yeah. Which you're going to see today. I'm just picky. That's all. I need things to go blend well. That's why all my bats sold. And that's why all her bats are extremely large, too. Because I can't stop. They're anywhere between four to almost six ounces of bat. Mm -hmm. But that's good because you get more. You get more fiber to spin. I don't want, what, a three ounce bat does me no good. Right. And I do make three ounce bats occasionally just because, well, that's all the pretty color I have of that. So that's what gets made. But as a spinner, if I'm going to spin, I want to spin. Right. Like... I could take two six ounce bats of the same thing and be the happiest person right. in the world. Um, but so here in just a second, we're going to get over to the drum carter. So stay tuned. And yeah. um, obviously we're going to do just a, hey, quick, hello. This is my this, this is my that. And then we will And it'll film. be more her than me. I'll get her started. Yep. And then I'm going to walk away because. She's going to leave me alone. She's got to run her store today. run my store. <laughs> All right, guys, um, we will see you shortly. I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful day. And, and uh, yeah, and let us know the workshops that you want to do because oh, this calendar is jam packed again. And she'll make me add more classes. No, I won't. She'll do it on her own. Whatever. So and so called, and stop the beginner it. macrame doesn't work for her. Hey, stop. Okay. But I love it. <laughs> see you Bye. in a minute. Bye. <laughs> Okay guys, so we are gonna do a how to make a bat on the drum carter. Um, we went over the pieces and parts of the drum carter before in our last video a couple weeks ago. Uh, a few minutes ago we talked a little bit about the ratios and yeah, um, I'm leaving this on this ratio because I don't see where it has made a difference for me. Um, sometimes when I'm making a bat, I will use like bits and pieces 
of a bunch of different fibers and that's what you see here. Sometimes I am revitalizing an old bat. Um, and that's the last of this right here. I spun what I needed to spin out of this. So this is BFL with some, some noils, uh, wool nips. It's luscious and soft. Um, I have a little bit of Lox. I have a little bit of Angelina. And then the rest of this is just like, if you've ever gotten a Millen's bag, it's just bits and pieces of leftover fibers. Um, so we're gonna start with that. And every time that I am making a bat, I, st I think I can wear gloves. I can't wear gloves. I'm so cold today, but it's rainy in Ohio. We suck. Well, <laughs> mother nature sucks. Um, I like to have a good foundation. Even if I'm going to stripe a bat, I still need a foundation under there. And if you, if you stripe, like say I do this, then I do another color, then I do another color, then I do another color. If you're not overlapping those fibers some way, your bat's going to fall apart. Um, and take it from somebody who did do that thinking it was going to be cool. And then you take it off the carter and uh, my bat fell apart in three sections because I striped without knowledge. So um, I'm just going to show you the very beginnings of getting a foundation in there. And then, yes, ma'am. So the piece that's up. Yeah, I'm going to tell them here in a second. Okay, I'm getting fine. there. She's so interruptive. Okay, um, so I'm going to start with just that foundation, um, and I'm going to add a little bit of color, and then we're going to, like, stop this part of the video, and we're going to do a little fast forward of a video, so that you can watch me make the bat without listening to me talk for the next hour, and we'll speed it up so it's only, like, a five-minute video, but you'll get to see what I'm doing and as I'm doing it, and I'll come back when it's time to take the bat off. This little guy right here that Janine so nicely pointed out. This is my little brush and I move him down and kind of lock him in place because I want him to help push fiber down on my drum carter. I will also, you'll see me use my brush and this helps me pack fiber on. So give me one second and let's do this real quick. And I am just layering my fibers and I'm just gonna keep layering this whole bottom And as we go, so we're gonna pretend for a second that there's a lot more fiber on here than what there is. Okay, but once I get across, I take my brush and I come in here and I sit right up top. I lift my fingers, because boy, you don't want this to catch your fingers, you will bleed. And you use your brush and you just pack that fiber down onto the actual carter. Now, one of the things when you're making these bats, you're gonna see this silver section right here. This actually, this is where we come in. You'll see this line. This is where we come in with the awl and take things off at the end. But when you watch right here, this is gonna tell you, this is your guide to where do I need more fiber in my bat? Because a lot of times without meaning to, we're adding fiber, adding fiber, adding fiber, and we skip whole sections and this ends up thick and this ends up thin and if you're trying to maintain an even bat you want to watch this little section right here and that will tell you how you have too much fiber in one place and not enough in another um, but you'll see as I go how I add the pieces when I do speed up the video I won't speed it up so fast that you know my hands are moving like this and you can't see anything but um, we're gonna stop now and then I'll go through, make the bat, and then I'll come back to show you how to take it off. Stop. Stop.
Okay, so over the last little bit, you saw me layer this lovely drum carter with all of my fiber. Now, I hope that you saw when I picked up my locks or my Angelina that I was lightly tapping and 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 I only had very minute amounts of things in here because Angelina is like glitter. Once you touch it, it goes everywhere. And Janine is laughing behind the camera. Um, because, you know, I like a little glitz, but I don't want to roll in glitter, if you know what I mean. So little bits of locks, too much locks on a drum carter, clog up the drum carter. Um, and and really you just want in a in an art bat, you just want that little bit of spring and life that a couple of locks here and there give you. Um, but you'll notice that what I did is I did a foundation. I came in, I striped with color. I then layered over with little bits and pieces. And then I came in and I put another foundation on because I want to make sure that every time I'm layering colors through here, that they're not gonna separate. When I go to spin this, when I take this apart, that's gonna be in layers and I'm gonna be able to pick and choose where I'm spinning from. It's really great. So when you go to take this off, you have an awl. That silver line that I talked to you about, you'll see right here, that's where your awl goes. I'm gonna obviously do it from the other side. Um, and I did not load this bat all the way to the top um, just because there was kind of no reason to just to show you guys. Um, so when you come in, I come in underneath that all with the all on that line and I lift and sometimes I push and I lift and I have to do it little bits at a time. I have the world's suckiest hands. So, um, I, I will be honest and tell you that there are moments when I cut my bat off when my hands were really bad. But um, I will tell you, you can tell that you cut it off and it doesn't look so pretty when you cut fiber. It's not a nice thing to do to your world. So we just continue to go work across. Yes, you need a little bit of strength to do this, just so you know. But also if you kind of tilt back and lift like this, um, that does help loosen the fiber. And then I come back and do little bits at a time. I will tell you, um hand strength yes my hands are not as bad as hers and i still have to do it in little bits as well because why fight it that is pretty strong when you put it on the drum carter <laughs> it is it is there's there's yeah and you can see like little bits will come out and i just kind of fold those over to where they go whichever side um if little loose bits come undone i just layer it right into that bottom because who cares it's all going to get spun the same Now I am going to come on this side just so that I can loosen things up so that I can continue on because it's kind of hard for me to reach from that side. All right, so I loosen that up and you can see all the delightful colors that are blending in with that natural BFL that's in there. And I really like this um, specifically because a lot of times when we layer colors through something um people tend to use like a creamy base um i really like i feel like the brown is the miss is 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 the forgotten base um because some of these colors really really pop like that kind of burgundy deep magenta and orange and the blues they look really good with that brown now it would look just as it would look different on the white or the creamy base. Um, I just tend to like it. And you can see the little, you can see a little sprigs of Angelina in here. One of the, you'll see, I put gold Angelina in it. However, there's also some blue Angelina from the fiber, one of the fibers that I used. And then there's also some silver Angelina in here from one of the uh, other fibers. So it's kind of neat that I got a little bit there's like three or four different colors of Angelina, which makes all the other colors that were in here pop. 
I'm going to set my all down. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to hold on to it because I'm going to need it. So what I do is I come up here. I say goodbye to my brush because I no longer need him. We're going to say goodbye. You go away. Let go of my fiber first. All right. Get out the way. Let's separate all these guys, make sure nobody's catching on that. And then I bring it all in and I roll it off. And if anything catches right here, sometimes um, my teeth on my drum carter are a little closer together. So when I go to pull this off, um, more things catch. So I kind of use the awl and I just kind of run it through and bring those fibers in. Now you're going to get to the point where it is right where... The end of your bat is coming through where both of your, what do you call these? Drums. Both of the drums, duh, where both of the drums meet. And sometimes it needs a little extra uh to get it through there. Um, again, because her this drum carter has a little less teeth, it's not as hard, which, wow, I didn't think about that when I was getting my drum carter, did I? But I do really love my drum carter. Well, they don't make that one anymore. This one? Mm -hmm. The well, cloth. That's sad. Yeah, so that's for coarse. That's a 36, okay. and yours is a oh, 72. Oh, mine is a little finer. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you'll see, I just kind of reached right in here. So some of your fibers can, like, leak off the side when you're working. And I really, really, really like to get that out because we don't need anything extra clogging up our carter. So when we're done, I will come back in here and get all of that excess fiber off that I can. I caught the piece that I saw going into it. And I'm just going to keep pulling. See, there was a couple pieces that wanted to stick. All right. Now, these little excess pieces, oh, I'm just lifting them off the carter. And I'm going to bring them with my bat. So, you obviously see the foundation of the bat, right? We're going to roll this in. I'm going to roll this in, and then we're going to roll this way, and look at this really pretty bat that we just created. I know. Hopefully. I don't know if that was fire or... It was fire. Aw. Either way. Aw. Mm-hmm. There you go. We have a nice, nice little drum carter. There you go. Drum Carter. Uh, nice little bat. Nice little bat. And you can see the Angelina. You can see a little bit of the locks all through here. It's pretty. Really pretty. Lots of fun. Um, I will take the time this weekend and I will spin from this bat and I will just put up a little under our shorts video. Um, I will show you what this spins into for those inquiring minds. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll have to decide if I'm going to spin art yarn with it or if I'm going to spin regular. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a little bit of both. There you All go. All right. So I hope you guys have a lovely day and, uh, remember to like, subscribe to the Blue Fiber Tree, share it with your friends. We're getting up there in numbers. And uh, don't forget to check out our Facebook page because sometimes we have stuff going on in there that is not on our videos. Have a lovely day. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye.